so I'm filling in for her. Um, I just to let you know, we'll be recording this webinar today and we'll be posting it on the SUA website under training resources and materials. So you can go back and look at this at any time. Uh, just to let you know, everyone is muted and we do that to avoid static and background noises. What we'd like to do is ask you to go ahead and um, text in your questions under the chat section, the chat feature of the um, webinar. Um, also, if you are in a group, um, if you could send in your list of who's attending so we know, that would be terrific. You could email that to Sue Ann or myself. Um, and that's basically uh, the overview. And so with that, I'd like to introduce you to Don Rustin, my colleague who um, is, is, was one of the um, creators, designers, all, uh, all of that on the new website. And so Don, go ahead and take it away. Great, thank you. I'm just going to pull the phone a little bit closer to me because sometimes my voice doesn't carry very well. So please let me know if you're having trouble hearing me at all. And if uh, at any point I'm moving too quickly for you, also uh, feel free to uh, send that our way via the chat box as well. And I'll make sure to slow my pace down a bit. So um, hopefully you all are able to see my screen. You should be seeing the home page of our Aging and Disability Resource Connection of Oregon website. Uh, I'll just check quickly, no chat, so it looks like you all are probably able to see my screen. Um, so my goal today is to do a general walkthrough of the website of each section to point out some key functionality, um, a lot of which is new, and I shouldn't say too new at this point because the, the redesigned website has been out for over a year now, but it's still um, all new to us, and this is a good opportunity for us to explore that further with you. So as I walk through the site, I'll be putting out different um, pieces of new content and functionality as we go. So um, we'll spend just a little bit of time in each section, and then we'll take a closer look at our search functionality specifically and spend some time there as well. So starting with the home page of the website, um, you'll notice there are four main entry points to the site. There's explore, search, connect, and plan. And so again, we'll walk through each section of the site in detail, but just to give you an overview from this point, um, the explore your options section is where consumers can go to learn more about their long-term services and supports options in their local area. Uh, the search for resources section of the website is connected directly to our resource database, and that's where uh, you can do a search for different resources and services in your local community, um, and you can search by different options. So there's the ability to do a quick search here straight from the home page by zip code or county and by using a keyword, and we'll um, attempt that a little bit later. But also, if you click through to the search section of the site, it gives you multiple different search options that we'll take a closer look at as well. The connect with your local ADRC section is where consumers can go to get um, background information about the ADRC of Oregon and also uh, specific local contact information for an ADRC in their area. And then lastly, our fourth section of the website is our planning and prevention section of the site. And this is a newer area of content for the most part. And this um, is where consumers go to start thinking about uh, their long-term services and support options. Um, some people go here with an immediate need, but the idea is that um, this is sort of an education piece that we can hope that we can help consumers start thinking about ahead of time so that um, they're less likely to, likely to find themselves in a, a crisis that hasn't been planned for. Um, so those are the four main entry points to the website. Um, down below um, is an at-a-glance view at some of the subsections under each section so that you can more easily click through to one of those areas. Uh, then we have our 1-800 number, our email address, um, and the, across the top we have a different kind of search. This is a website content search, so this 
uh, search uh, searches all of the content on our website, not the resource database content, so it's different. Um, we also have um, translation services available on the site, and so um, we use the Google translation service and these are the different options that are available for content to be translated in on the website. And then we have functionality to change the text size of the site. Um, the other items that you can access from the home page, uh, we have a planning toolkit that we rolled out with the launch of the redesign site. And it's a combination of content that um, lives in different sections of the website and some different tools. Um, that were developed as part of this project as well. So we can take a closer look at that uh, before we go today. And then you have access to um, a survey that we like to solicit feedback on the website from. So that's accessible from the home page of the website. And then just um, promoting our Facebook page as well. So people have the ability to come here and like the page. And I encourage you all after the session to um, visit our website, take a closer look, and while you're on the home page, feel free to click that like button and follow the ADRC of Oregon on Facebook. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and click through to the first section. This is the Explore Your Options section of the website. Um, we have different topics in this area. So uh, we have sort of a general overview of what are long-term services and support. Um, different levels of service, and we have a section called service costs, and we're in the process of updating these figures in this section, but I wanted to show this page because there are a couple of tools that were developed um, that live on this page, and um, I want to take a little bit of closer look at them, and these tools are supposed to be used as sort of a helpful tool in talking about and planning for future long-term services it's not meant to, to be um, you know, a real calculation of what your service costs are going to be, but we think it's really helpful to give consumers a general idea of um, just how expensive some of these costs can be and to really encourage people to plan ahead and start thinking now about um, how they could plan for that so that they're in a better position when the time comes. So the first worksheet that we'll look at is called How Much Will Services Cost? So I'll open that up and we'll take a, a quick look at that. Let me change the size for you all. So this is a fillable PDF document that does an auto calculation for you. Um, so the great things about this are that you can complete it, you can save it, you can print it, you can email it. Um, you can update it. So just quickly, um, you know, you can play around with different types of possibilities and it will auto-calculate the results for you. So depending on, um, you know, the different potential living situation and um, again, these aren't meant to be really specific numbers. This is general broad picture of service costs. So we recognize that for any particular living situation, um, there are going to be a lot of variables involved in the real and actual cost of these types of services. But um, this is just a general overview of how this worksheet works. And um, the next worksheet that we'll look at builds off of this worksheet. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this total estimated yearly cost, which isn't realistic at all because I have multiple uh, facility types selected. But just to give you an idea, um, so say you complete that worksheet. Again, you could print it, save it, email it. And then if you open up the second worksheet, This is how you pay for services. So you take um, your sort of generated estimated service cost, and it could be anything. Um, you plug that in here. You estimate the number of years you anticipate you might need services. It calculates a total for you. 
Uh, and step two, you um, think about your um, assets. And there's two columns. You know, you can do your your current value of stuff, and you can estimate your future value. And what the worksheet does then is it takes your estimated cost of care up here. It uses your estimated resources that you might have available, and then it calculates the difference for you to help you have a better understanding of um, your financial situation and any estimated costs or how you could better plan or think about um, future needs. So these are just two tools that were uh, implemented as part of the redesign project. Those tools are also available in the principal's toolkit as well. And again, we're in the process of updating these figures to the most um, current ones. So that's an overview of the long-term services and support section, um, background information. Then there's sections uh, for different topic areas. So uh, in your community has uh, stuff like adult day services, meal programs, senior centers, uh, chronic disease management, and transportation. For some of these um, topic areas, like meal programs, for instance, some new functionality that we added is where you're in a section learning about a type of service, sometimes we allow you the opportunity to then search for that service in your local area. Um, so we've been calling these predefined searches. And so say I'm reading about meal programs and I have an interest in knowing what meal programs exist in my local area. I can then go in and um, and either type a, a zip code or a county that I'm interested in, and it'll pull up a, a search for me and return results of meal programs in my local area. Um, and we'll spend some more time in the search results section, and I'll walk through a lot of the functionality that exists there when we get to that section. But just that was just an example of um, new functionality that we've added that makes it really easy to do a search for resources from the resource database when you're reading about a particular topic. Um, the next section under Explore is Explore Options in Your Home. So uh, there's content here about who can help. We have information about the Home Care Commission and Home Care Workers here. We link directly to the Home Care Commission registry as well. Um, and we have information about in-home care agencies uh, in your local area also. Um, again, we have information about meal programs, medical equipment, monitoring and reminder services. Our next section under the Explore is um, exploring your options in a facility. So this is where we break down the different um, types of facilities that consumers would have the option to choose from. And so we have information about adult foster homes, assisted living and residential care facilities, nursing facilities, memory care, um, information about um, the long-term care ombudsman, different resources, consumer guides, um, getting help finding the right facility, things to consider when you're working with a placement agency, licensed facility complaint information, um, some tips about doing research before you select a facility option. So clicking through, so um, for instance, this is the living residential care facilities. We have predefined search here, so you can again search for um, a facility in your local area. So that will bring up the results for that. Clicking through um, the next section is uh, our section on um, Alzheimer's resources. And this is an area where we have another predefined search. And lastly, in this section, um, we have information about caregiver supports, legal assistance, and elder abuse protection. 
So before I move on to the next section of the site, I just want to check to see if there are any questions about the Explore Your Options section or the home page. I'm not seeing any. So I'll keep going. Feel free at any point to uh, send us questions in the chat box, and we can always come back and revisit the section and take a closer look. So I'm going to, um, if you notice from here, we have this main level of navigation. This is our top level of navigation. This gets me to um, any of the four uh, sections of the site, explore, search, connect, or plan, or back to the home page. So um, I always have those options accessible to me. I don't need to return home to get into another area of the site. Um, I'm going to skip over to the connect section now. Um, this, again, is where you can go to get information about your local ADRC. So we have a statewide map, and if you click on any particular county, it returns the um, local contact information for that ADRC. This is where we have information about what the ADRC of Oregon is. Um, this is where our website survey lives to solicit and collect information on our website. And this is uh, where there's information about our uh, resource database, and it talks more specifically about the types of resources that we uh, include or do not include as part of ADRC of Oregon in our database. So this information is helpful for providers who are interested in potentially being a part of our database, and it's also helpful uh, for consumers and family members um, to help them understand the types of things they would find in our database and, and the types of things that maybe aren't included and why. Um, and then uh, this is where a provider can submit information to us to request to be included as part of the database. Um, and just, just to point out for navigation purposes, it's very clear where you're at within our website because this tab is clearly highlighted that we're in the connect section. Um, this tab's highlighted that we're in the provider database information, and we're down here in blue under provider request form. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that we've made it really difficult to get lost or buried within the website. Um, as part of the redesign project, we wanted to simplify the information and um, have the navigation be really consistent and easy to follow so that it would be easy for people to find um, their place and be able to come back to the same content in the future. So we've just made it really clear um, where you're at in the website. And um, this is sort of a three-level drill down. And we don't allow you to get any deeper in the website because at that point you might get a little lost. So. Um, just so you're aware, if you're using the site and you're somewhere that you want to get back to, that's how you sort of assess where you're at in the site. So that's it for the connect section of the site. Um, I'm going to move over to the plan section. So this, again, is the sort of um, information about planning for your future long-term services supports needs, and for some people um, in the moment planning for what their options are. So um, there's information about why it's important to plan and think about the future, um, some tips on some of the you know, initial steps in planning, things to think about. There's information about talking to your family and sort of how to have that conversation and things that you should, should be thinking of. Um, one thing to notice in terms of functionality, you'll see throughout the website, there's a double dotted line under some text. And if you hover over any of that text throughout the site, it brings up a definition for that, um, that word or that term. And so that's just something to keep in mind as you're navigating throughout the site. Um, we've added in that functionality as well. So we have the funding your care section. And this is where we uh, talk about uh, both 
private and public options for funding your long-term services supports needs. Um, so we talk about, you know, in personal income and savings, long-term care insurance, home equity, um, reverse mortgage. And so as we were as we were coming up with content for the site, we recognized that we're not the experts in a lot of these areas. So it was important for us to provide a really high level understanding of different options available, but our goal is to really point consumers to the experts in those individual areas to really um, walk through those pieces and talk about them in more depth. So you'll notice um, you know, it's a delicate dance in terms of the level of content that we provide on the site. Um, but that's why we have kept it high level. Um, so this is where, again, throughout this portion of the site, as we're talking about funding your care, you have access to those two worksheets. Again, how, will, how much will services cost and how will I pay for services, um, just as general tools and reminders of um, how it's good to think about your future needs so you're prepared. We have a section on um, Medicare. We have information about um, the SHIBA program and the Senior Medicare Patrol program. A lot of different resources and materials here. Um, we have information about Medicaid. This page, um, general information about Social Security. Some veterans benefits information, and then we have a section on protecting your finances. And this is where we uh, talk about the money management program and conservatorship as well. Then we have a section on uh, legal and care planning. So um, this just gives consumers information about um, things they should be thinking about in terms of putting a plan in place, um, some of the necessary documents that they should be considering filling out or having in place as well. So talking about um, financial power of attorney, representative payee, trust, advance directive, and a poll. And again, some um, additional resources there. Then we have an independent housing section, which is some general information about um, what to consider and staying in your own home, other independent living options and a um, small section on home modifications. Lastly, in the plan section, we have our healthy living content. And this is where consumers can go to um, get more information or helpful tips around staying active, eating healthy foods, managing your health, staying connected. So that's a general overview of the plan section. I just want to pause for a minute to see if there are any questions or comments about the plan section or the explore section, the connect section, or the home page. So I'm going to briefly click into our printable toolkit um, so we can take a quick look at that before I move on to the search page, and then we'll spend um, a fair amount of time in the search section. So this is our uh, principal toolkit This rolled out with the redesigned website. And let me see about size. So again, the things that exist in this toolkit, um, a lot of it's duplicative of the content that you'll see throughout our website. And then there are a few of the um, worksheets and tools available in the printable toolkit as well. So um, this is the table of contents. So we talk about understanding your long-term services and supports options, um, how much will services cost, private options, public options, information about uh, creating a comprehensive long-term services and supports plan, so the content around why plan now, personal planning steps, financial planning steps, um, how will you pay, legal and care planning, housing considerations. So um, I welcome you all after the session to visit the website and to um, click on the link for this resource and take a closer look at it. 
and uh, consider how this may be helpful um, for you or for people that you're working with. It's a, a good added resource to the website, and um, we'll be working soon to update this resource as well because it's been out for about a year now. So we want to up update some of the numbers that are reflected in there too. Ah, where is my? There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the last section of the website that we haven't visited yet. This is the search for resources section. Um, as I said before, on the home page, you have the ability to do a quick search um, here. And uh, you can see as you type, the website will suggest different options for you. You're welcome to choose from one of the options that it's suggesting, um, but you don't have to. You can um, ignore that and just select the Go button. Um, I'll go ahead and choose from one of the options they've provided. So um, as you can see, this is the search result page. Um, this tells you what you searched for and how many results there were. Um, all of the results are listed down below, and they're also plotted on uh, a Google map. Um, you have the ability to um, do a few things. One thing you can do is you can, um, you can uh, enter your address, either your home address, your loved one's address, whatever address you happen to care about in relation to the resources that you just search for to um, see which resources are nearest your home. So I will go ahead and show you how that works. So I've entered my work address. And you can see now that I said that I wanted to see the services that were closest to me, so I entered my address, and the results are now um, returned with a distance calculation, so I can see um, just how close uh, one of these services is to where I live or I work or um, whatever that location is that I care about for whatever reason. So. Um, some things that you can do with search results, um, we have what we call filtering options so that you can narrow down your search results by a criteria that matters most to you. Um, so for instance, if I were only interested um, in a service that offers clothing, then I could click clothing. It shows me that four of the results um, have that available. And so when I click that, it narrows my search results down over here to just those four resources that offer clothing services. Um, I can also then narrow my search results further um, by city or zip code. For instance, if I'm only interested in uh, services available in Salem, I could click on that and my results would narrow even further to three results. Um, some things I can do with these re results, if I wanted to um, compare them side by side, I could select them. I could also use this button up here that says select all listings and do it that way. Um, so I've selected them and I can uh, click on the compare button and it gives me an at a glance view of these three um, service options, and I can compare side by side different uh, pieces of information about them to have a better idea of um, what they offer and which one might best meet my needs. Um, also have the ability to print that at a glance view. Um, I can also select print from this view when I have my resources selected that I want to print. And uh, in doing that, I have two options. I can choose to print just a basic amount of information on each of the selected resources, or I can print a full uh, page uh, result for each one. So 
I'll select just the basic information and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is returned to me as a PDF and so um, I have the ability then to print it, save it, email it, uh, do whatever I would like with it. Um, so this gives me just an at a glance view of some of the important information about the individual resource. And then if I select instead that I want to print a full page of information for each resource. And then it gives me a more detailed printout of each of the resources. So another um, option that you have when you select resources from this list is that you can choose to email them to yourself or to someone else. And it's just that easy. And now either you've emailed it to yourself or to someone else that you wanted to send that information to. Um, another option you have from this view is you can click on this map button to get a larger view of uh, the Google map that plots the resources. And um, you can then from here, if you are interested, and getting directions to a specific um, location. You can uh, click on that and it takes you uh, to Google Maps where you're able then to um, see a more closer up view. You can get a street view of uh, the location of the service and you can um, type in your address to get uh, driving directions to that particular service. So I also want to, um, from the search page, so that was a, a search from the quick search on the home page. I want to give you a view of what the search looks like from the main search section. So you have the ability to search again by um, keyword by using your zip code or county and a keyword. And this is exactly the same of what we just did from the quick search on the home page. You also have the ability to search by need which we'll take a closer look at in just a, sec in just a second. And then we have an Assess Your Needs survey where you can answer a series of questions that will lead to um, uh, suggested search results based on the way that you answered the questions. So since we just did a search by keyword, I'm going to go ahead and do a search um, by need. And so I'm going to select um, We'll select Jackson County. Um, I'm going to select housing facilities and shelters. And I'm going to do uh, assisted living facilities. So here is the results for that. You'll see that I searched Jackson County for assisted living facilities, 17 listings returned. Our results are here. Um, I have the ability to filter or narrow my search results by different criteria, by city, by zip code, um, funding sources. So I can say that I only want to see uh, results for uh, facilities that accept Medicaid or OHP. And you can see that my results will be narrowed to nine results by doing that, which they were. Um, one unique feature for facilities that doesn't exist when you're searching for other types of resources is that you can actually expand your searched area. So we recognize that um, folks may be interested in looking at housing options or facility options in multiple different areas around the state. And so we wanted people to have the ability to um, maybe search in neighboring counties at the same time. And so this um, shows you that 
um, the number of resources that would be returned for individual counties. So we searched for Jackson County. Maybe I also want to see what's available in Josephine County. Um, so this is just alerting me that I had filters applied because um, we narrowed our search down by facilities that accepted Medicaid. So this is saying, hey, we're about to expand your search. And before we do that, we need to clear out some of the filters that you applied to narrow your search results. And I'm saying, yes, that's OK. Thank you for letting me know. So we'll go in here. Where is my Josephine County? I think Josephine. Did it disappear? Oh, here it is. There's Josephine. So this is a new functionality. Um, before, we were really limited in only being able to search um, within one particular um, county. And so this is great because you can also, I mean, not only could you search by um, different variations of multiple counties, but you can also search by all counties. And so you can get a statewide um, view of all the assisted living facility options, and then you can narrow your resu results down by um, whatever criteria is most relevant or helpful to you. And so, um, for instance, it may be um, except private pay, which may not be completely accurate, but um, just gives you an idea of the different options and functionality that exist for being able to make um, better, more informed choices by utilizing the functionality available on the site. So I realize um, I'd like to do one more search and actually click through to look at um, what a search result looks like. So let's go ahead and do I'm going to do Multnomah, and let's search for food. And let's search for food pantries, and let's take a look at what a search result looks like. So we'll just pick the first one. Here's St. Mark's Community Resources. Um, this is what uh, an individual search result listing looks like. So again, it's plotted on the Google map, so you can see the location. You can click through to get directions. Um, there's more in-depth information about um, the provider and the service. Um, and there's functionality available for this as well. So you can um, choose to print the uh, individual resource listing result. And it comes up, again, as a PDF, so you have the ability to um, save, print, or email that. You also have the ability to um, email this individual listing the same way that you saw us email um, a series of listing results and um, a bigger view of the resource plotted on the map where you could click through uh, to Google Maps to use their functionality to get driving directions or see street view of the service. This is also um, where providers would go in then. So um, whoever is responsible for St. Mark's Community Resources, um, they could click here and go in and submit updates to the information that's being displayed in their listing results. And our uh, local resource manager would then be prompted uh, that a change had been suggested for that resource listing. And then our resource manager would go in and review the changes and confirm that they were accurate. And then a resource manager would be responsible for pushing those changes to the live site. The providers aren't able to actually change the information that shows on our public website without our staff going in and reviewing it for accuracy and approving it um, before the changes actually appear there. So the last section that I'll show you in the search page is the Assess Your Needs section. And I'll just quickly show you um, that this is a needs assessment tool. This is where you can answer a series of questions about yourself or someone else. 
and about uh, the different types of needs that they have. And I'm just going to click through randomly as we're talking so you can get a sense of um, what the results look like out of this. So let's just ask all kinds of questions about um, the person's situation, um, insurance information, um, medical conditions, different needs. And then um, from there, you select a county and hit submit. And then what happens is, based on the way that you answered the questions, um, it suggests a list of different types of services. And for each different type of services, it provides a link to a list of results. Um, so for instance, there's one, let's go back and look at so food pantries, for instance, it's saying, and we had identified that we were in Clackamas County, so um, the needs assessment assessed that we might need um, food resources, and so it's providing a list of all of the food pantries in Clackamas County because we identified that's where we were interested in services for. And so this just takes you to our search result page where we then again have all of the functionality that we took a look at to be able to filter and narrow results or to um, compare resources or print or email. So I think with that, I want to pause. Um, I've gone through all the different sections of the site. I think I've hit on all of the functionality um, that is new or improved. And I want to allow some time to be able to respond to some specific questions or if there are any areas that you want me to go back to so that we could take a closer look at or explore further, I'd be happy to do that. Um, we're in our final 15 minutes, so I just want to make sure that we do have time for that if anyone has any interest or desire or questions? Oh, might be something here. Hold on just a second. See if I can expand this question box. Is there is there a page with the hours of operation for the resources? Yes. So um, for, let me go back and take a closer look at a resource that can show you that information. Yes, hours of operation is definitely one of the um, pieces of information that we capture um, or that we ask to have captured for resources. Um, so when is the service available? This particular service is available on Fridays from 3 to 5.30 p.m. Um, and then in the comments section, there's additional information about um, the food pantry hours there. So that's where you would find the information. If we have it on a resource, it's going to be on that detailed view if you click through the, to the individual um, listing results page. Let me see if I can, I'm trying to navigate this question section of the webinar box and um, it's really small so I'm trying to uh, click through and see what questions might be sitting in there. It looks like we have some questions. I think we have quite a few questions, I just need to know how to get to this. Give us just a second. Hmm. Oh, I see. All right. Hang tight. I think we might have it figured out. Okay. Oh, no. I'm hearing, was there sound failure? Are other people having a hard time hearing? I'm wondering. So I have some feedback that at least one person was having a hard time hearing. 
Um, so I have a question. Will a recommended edit on the consumer page result in a change on the staff page? And I'm thinking that's in response to where I showed that a provider can um, request to update their information. And so if a provider makes any edits to this section here, um, then staff are prompted, um, or staff have a way to regularly check to see if there has been a change made and it would be in pending status. And so staff would know to take a look at that um, to approve it and push it to live so that it shows through on the website. So no changes uh, show on the website that providers suggest until they've been vetted by a staff person. And staff people have a way um, that they watch for that and process that information. Question, where do I find the phone number of a local Medicaid office, a local legal services office, et cetera? So you would do that by using our search engine, and so it would depend on what you're um, looking for. So um, for instance, if you're looking for Medicaid, perhaps the consumer might um, search for the keyword Medicaid, and then it would list the search results, and that's where you would pull the phone number for that particular service. And we're also really good about um, encouraging folks to just pick up the phone and call the ADRC to get connected to the right service as well. So that's something that we really stress is, you know, this is a great option that we have the search available at your fingertips um, and all of this wonderful, helpful information. but um, we make sure to stay throughout the entire website, and we're always good about encouraging um, that we have staff on hand who um, are helpful, and that's what we're here for, and please pick up the phone to call. So somebody says, still no sound, and that I'm clicking all over the place and it's hard to track the training. I'm very sorry about that. I'm hoping that not everyone is having trouble hearing us. And somebody says, sound is gone again. I don't know. So I'm really sorry that we're having some sound issues. I'm not sure what's happening. With that, hopefully, hopefully that's an isolated case, and most of you all are able to hear this training. Okay, some people are saying that they're hearing fine, no problems hearing. That's good. Um, are any of these services sliding? Yes, the, um, the resource data database allows the inclusion of um, um, all types of resources, so um, private pay only and public options and options that offer sliding fee scale. So all of the above, and when the information is available, um, that's specified in the resource listing as well. And I think... I may have responded to all the questions in the chat box. Um, and I apologize if I missed any. We're having trouble expanding the question box to be able to see it clearly. Um, so I would welcome any additional questions that you have. Feel free to send them our way after the webinar. You're welcome to direct them um, to me at my email address or through Sue Ann or Christy or whoever, and we'll make sure to address them um, for you. And um, we're also happy to um, follow up 
to provide some one-on-one -on -one, um, walkthroughs or training if necessary. I don't know how many of you um, had difficulty or trouble hearing this session, so um, we are more than happy to reach out to you individually to um, answer your questions or do another walkthrough, whatever would be most helpful. And with that, um, I think I'm through the questions, and I will go ahead and turn it back over to Christy for a moment. Great. Thank you very much, Dawn. Um, I just wanted to remind you that we did record this session, and it will be on SUA website under Training as and Materials. Um, and also let you know that we'll be getting a survey out to you within the next hour, and we would really appreciate your feedback. Let us know how we have done and what we can do um, better. Um, again, these are all to support you out there and help you do your job a little bit better or make it easier for you. So we really do value your feedback. Again, thanks for joining us today. And our next webinar will be September 16th. Um, I don't think they've selected a topic at this point, but you will be notified as soon as they do. Um, if there's something in particular you would like to see, please feel free to contact Sue Ann Jackson, our trainer, and we'll see what we can do. Um, again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you found this helpful. And let us know if we can do anything else to support you and the great work you do out there. Thanks for everything. Bye.